Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh. It's the Pitchworks Podcast. So when you need to scale, you want to hire a VFA fellow. That is a really interesting punch point you just made there, like entirely by accident, I'm sure, right? Um, you've you've had this conversation. This? Can we play this either at the very beginning or very end or maybe both? <laughs> Hey, everybody, it's Scott. It's Wednesday, and it's a Pitchworks podcast. Thanks for tuning in. This week, Katie Grimm, Venture for America. If you don't know what this is, you definitely need to know, uh, especially because the quality of the offer that VFA is making to startups and to college students is is good enough that you, you really want to be aware of it. Uh, before we jump in, I'm going to ask you to follow this show on all of the various and sundry social medias. That would be your Facebooks, your Instagrams, your Twitters, your LinkedIn company pages. Show us the love. We'll interact with you. It's going to be great. Uh, so Venture for America, think of it this way, a fellowship where high talent individuals coming out of college can get into the startup environment and actually make a big difference on day one. I really like this plan. I think you're going to like this show. Katie Grimm, welcome to the studio. How are you doing? Thanks. I'm great. Pittsburgh Director for Venture for America. Does that feel right? Did I, did I introduce you right? Sounds about right. Most okay. people say Director of Pittsburgh. Director but of it, Pittsburgh. I don't know. It sounds like a movie. Either way. Venture for America is a nonprofit fellowship organization which places top recent college graduates in startups in 14 cities across the country. Wow. And Pittsburgh is one of them. Pittsburgh gets to be on that list. Yeah. How about that? Because, I mean, from a population center size, Pittsburgh is not in the top 14. So it has to be based on either the schools that are here or the startups that are here. Is that right? A little bit of both and then yeah. some. So we target emerging entrepreneurial ecosystems or emerging city markets. Interesting. The whole reason Venture for America came to be is because we're trying to combat the brain drain happening in our country. Oh, okay. Right? So we've got about five major cities where the best and brightest college graduates flock to. And they're taking jobs in corporate finance and consulting. And what's happening is we're not having that kind of intelligence and creative energy coming into cities like a Pittsburgh, a Detroit, a Cleveland, a Baltimore. It's the snow, isn't it? It's the snow. It's the snow. <laughs> We're suffering through it right now while we talk. Hey, what Boston and New York has plenty of snow. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. So those those markets, like San Francisco is the first one to spring to mind. Everybody sure. knows that San Francisco is a giant talent magnet. It's it's literally a talent stealing machine. It's it's what they intend to do. You know, they um, they want to attract you there, and then you become part of the scene, and you know that the startup probably has a low chance of survival, but you can grab on with somebody else and become part of a different effort fairly easily. Some of these other towns, Detroit, I mean, they're on the comeback, but it, it's probably not as easy. Right. But in Venture for America, Detroit is like one of our hottest cities. Nice. Young people want to go there because of the energy that it has. Right, so uh, the the saying you can be a big fish in a small pond. Right, um, that's Detroit, that's Pittsburgh, that's Cleveland. Right, it's easier to to reach near the top of the mountain. Yeah, earlier. yeah, or or make a splash. Right. Mm -hmm. So these are young people who have some kind of entrepreneurial spirit, or that founder potential is what we call it. Um, they're creative. They're hustlers. They got charisma and enthusiasm and passion, and they want to do something bigger than just go sit on Wall Street yeah. or get sucked into the Silicon Valley. Not that those are bad things. So How about uh, this? For them, those are bad right. things. Right, right. And if, and if you think differently, then you're just not the target. Sure. And for our country, if that's where all of our top talent is going, then it's a bad thing for all of us. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make the on-ramp to entrepreneurship a little bit more accessible a little bit more risk adverse and a little bit just more plausible for uh, 
recent college graduates. It's not unlike a Teach for America where it's it's that's a very high profile fellowship program that most of its applicants are coming from Ivy League schools at this point, I yeah. think. So we're, I mean, we're not we're not that elite, but uh, we do a, attract top tier talent. We have an 11 percent acceptance rate. And um, that's, that's pretty low. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of the people that apply just don't make it. You know, I mean, you have to be the the best. Is that is that fair? Or There's is it or is it more of a alignment question? Both. So the best the best not just in academic performance, not just in um previous work experience, but your character. So okay. we take a lot into account. Also, we keep our class sizes super small because we want the fellows to essentially be friends for life. So our class sizes are about 180. Or so, give or take, depending on that year. For the whole country. For the whole country, yeah. Out of 14 cities? Is that 14 what you said? 14 cities, yeah. yeah. And we actually went from 18 to 14. Just, scaled just back. last year. We scaled back because in some markets, um, we realized, you know, the there isn't really a need anymore. Um, Interesting. Economically speaking, at least. So uh, in 14 cities, about 180 graduates each each year. Again, that, that fluctuates a little bit. But we, we keep our cohort sizes small because we believe in the network. We believe in the fellowship. So, so these classes are going to go on. They're going to do their fellowships, st- perhaps stay with those companies for a while longer, perhaps start their own companies, work somewhere else. But wherever they go in their life, wherever their professional journeys take them, they're going to have each other along the way. Let's define fellowship because some people who mm-hmm. are listening, they've never thought about fellowships. They've never thought about anything, any of these ideas, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So back. how do you define a fellowship in this context? In this context, it's a two-year mm-hmm. obligation to work for a startup company that you have been placed at. But when I say placed, it is Venture for America is not placing the fellow, the fellow and the company go through a regular hiring process just like you would anywhere else. It's not a surprise at the end. Yeah. Sure. So they select where they want to go, where they want to work. The co- company hires them outright. It's a regular salaried position. The fellowship entails a commitment to working for that company for at least two years. Mm-hmm. And it also entails the the VFA network. So they go to a five-week training camp to kick off the fellowship where they learn hard and soft skills and how to survive in the world. Yeah. Um, and They're going to be seen a little bit as a savior in some of these settings because of their high pedigree. I yeah, mean, that's right. There's that's a high right. expectation. Yeah. So um, the number goes something like 83% of our fellows have been ranked as either the, in the top 1% or top 10% as high performers by the companies that hire them. I, as I the guarantee. highest performers. Yeah. So when you need to scale, you want to hire a VFA fellow. That is a really interesting punch point you just made there, uh, entirely by accident, I'm sure, right? Um, you've you've had this conversation. This? Can we play this either at the very beginning or very end or maybe both? <laughs> just drive it I on. know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy who can get that done for you. Buzzy? It's me, actually, no, but that's okay. cool. Um, do you ever find a culture shock or a, like a culture conflict? It's not a character problem. It's like, a, well, but I want to have a nice office, right? Yeah. yeah. By the time they they make it to selection day, which is the the final evaluation, yeah, they we've already been able to kind of decipher yeah, if there out. would be a culture shock or not. Because at that point, they're they're saying, "I don't want to work in an office. Mm-hmm. I want to work in a small team. I want to be in an innovative environment. I want to have that scrappy, you know, all yeah. of those words that are as- descriptive of a startup." And a lot of a lot of our fellows said, "Hey, you know, I I had an internship this last summer at any you know bank firm, and um, I just don't think that's the right fit for me." I can tell you this. I mean, you didn't get to t- touch the real controls. Yeah, that you were no, you were not allowed anywhere near the actual decision maker. Yeah, or the decision makers. Right. Yeah. There's so many yeah. layers that you're yeah. insulated from them, and, but you get really good at grabbing coffee. Yeah. Really good at coffee. Yeah. So there was, so sometimes there's, we hit, we get candidates who had been disappointed in previous experiences and that's when the light bulb went off. Like, you know, maybe I want to take my career in a different path. Yeah. And there's, 
you know, there's a lot of pressure for young people to follow in the footsteps of perhaps other family members or Absolutely. their peers. A lot and of fear about failure yeah, in startups. Yeah. Yeah. People right. want you to take the safe, conservative yeah. route, right? They don't want you to have to go out and scrap and fight and worry about where you're going to get customers from. They want to go, oh, everybody goes to Goldman Sachs. You yeah. don't have any problem getting customers. Yeah. So we're making it a little bit easier yeah. for those who have this itch, yeah. you know? And I'm telling you something about young people and millennials getting labeled as the snowflakes, right? And difficult to work you with and stuff. You do not want to start this conversation with me. Okay. This well, makes me angry. It, yeah. Because listen- Young people are so driven and they have such they a have high- to be. Yes. They don't get a it's choice. It's so competitive. <laughs> the, the the pay scales are absolutely punitive compared to what we grew up with, right? And I don't yeah. I mean I paid thirty three hundred dollars a term to attend the University of Pittsburgh back in the Triassic era. Okay. Like <laughs> Like he's way older than me for the record. I, and that's why I didn't <laughs> notice I didn't say like Back when we were kids, I was like, just me, the gray-haired, gray-bearded old Yoda in the corner on the microphone. Um, no, it's entirely unfair. So not only did we screw up the entire system for them, but then we call them lazy. It, like, this is why I say, like, right. this is a powder keg when you bring right. this up with me. Right. And then warp the expectations for success. Yeah. Somehow. So they're, uh, they're turning to solutions like Venture for America, or Venture for America is offering solutions to to young people who can provide so much more value as a to our economy. As a fellowship, you're going to, to our I have to believe, pay less than you would on the open market, right, for that same level of talent, right? Yeah. You know, you're going to get somebody for basically a discount. You're going to get top talent at a discount yeah. with, the in, with the understanding that they're they're trying to figure out who they are and you're part of that. If you're the employer, you're part of that. Right. You know, and and maybe this startup isn't forever and ever, but yeah. Two but years is a good commitment. I mean, I've kept a bunch of people for a lot less than two years, I can tell you. And that's for anyone um in their twenties. I mean uh, I don't it's have true, true. numbers to back me up, but but that's that's typically the pace. You know, young people start their career, they want to move up, they want to move fast, and you know, that's kind of the rotation. Yeah. Uh, one of the schools that I advise, uh, they flat out to the career services people tell them every three years you should be flipping. Yeah. That was the advice I had too. Yeah. yeah. Because from 20 to 30, it's really easy to get caught behind the curve, right? right? You right. have to, you have to constantly be re-entering that market mm -hmm. and re-evaluating your value. And then as employers, we hate that, right? Like as employers are like, no, we'd rather have you stick around because we like continuity. We like not paying recruiters. We like all these other different things, but that's so far down the road from it. Let's go back yeah. to the original point, which was you got two years at a discount on top talent. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how much pushback do you really get from, from a real candidate? Like when you approach an employer. I mean, let me let me say the question a different way. Hi, I'm Katie from Venture for America. Would you like to have top talent at a discount for a guaranteed two year? I really like this pitch. Um, yeah. Do you have people who are like, no, I don't get it? Not really. I would well, say. especially not with that pitch. I haven't tried that pitch up. No, not really. And and then the other thing is, you're a startup and you have uh, two and a half employees. Do you want to go to all these career fairs and online job boards and vet hundreds and hundreds of applicants to your competition comment? You don't have time for that. You're literally doing everything else to keep a business running. So VFA is offering a solution to not just recent college graduates, but also to startups and the yeah. companies who, who are looking for that talent. Now, I know that this is another one of my like things that sets me off, right? The unpaid internship hangs around and won't die, right? You know, this idea that, well, you should come in and do it for the experience thing, right? And, and I've never been a big fan of that. Um, if only just because in most cases it's actually illegal, but that's another story for another day and I'll let you talk to your lawyer about it. But the, the other thing is I find a lot of times the unpaid internship, if you think about it on a longer timeline, is completely unreliable. You don't know right. how long that person's going to hang around because they really don't have any reason to commit to you. Yeah. So you can't actually have that person carry real weight. 
But for some reason, this is a trope that will not die in the entrepreneurship space. Like, oh, we'll just go to the college and we'll tell them that we need interns. And sure enough, somebody will show up and they'll, I don't know, do our work for us. <laughs> I don't get it. And I like don't know. 25 hours a week and for three months and then. With no benefits yeah. and you drive your own car. and But at least you get to put it on your resume like this. Again, I come from a different generation where we got paid for our work. I know I'm old fashioned. <laughs> Sorry to be the wet blanket. Um, but- no, and so it's it's not good for students yeah. who deserve to make some kind of wage and support themselves. Right. It's not good for the long-term vision of the company. And here's another thing. It's not good for our city's economy. Go on. Wouldn't we rather be putting money in young people? pockets who have disposable income and they go out and spend it wherever or okay a recent college graduate maybe from cmu computer science they've been interning at xyz company they've been actually making some money so they were actually able to put a down payment on an apartment off campus right. and now they transition to a full-time role they're they have a little bit more stake and commitment into this company you know, it's it's not that difficult to put the pieces together of an internship feels some at some point it feels calculated and cold. Yeah. Whereas a paid experience is a mutual commitment yeah. that can be built off of. I and, and you know I love you, but I don't yeah. I don't think anybody follows you along on that bouncing ball because it's too macro. Right. It's too macro for people to grasp, right? In Pittsburgh, yeah. Sure. I think anywhere. Right, because and and take this as a compliment it's intended to be. You're a true blooded patriot, right? And and it comes through sometimes when you start talking about this program and some of the other things, right? Like you really are like that that civic minded citizen that everybody should be, but not everybody is. So you do think that way about like, well, isn't that what's best for everybody? People have a lot of times though talk themselves into sort of that like cutthroat fiduciary responsibility corner where they just think that everything they have to do during the day is justified by cutthroat short-term. Yeah. Like not long-term yeah. thinking. The macro thing is a problem. The human brain's not wired to think. In most cases, it's not mm-hmm. wired to think in terms of potential loss or potential difficulty or whatnot. It thinks in terms yeah. of like the rat with the feeder bar in the experiment, right? Right. So I like the pitch where we talk about, again, top talent. I want top talent. I think you want top talent working in your offices for VFA and you know, it's a completely yeah. different thing. I don't want to think that I have to come up with a hundred thousand dollars to do it. I mean, how much is it? How much is a fellow getting paid on average? And I don't want to hold you to it, but no, that's okay. Um, on average, our floor is $38,000. Okay. So, so probably 50 is probably. Yeah. The, yeah. A lot of fellows negotiate up from there. Yeah. Um, but we, we ask that 38 is a minimum and they have uh, health care. There you go. Okay, so, so so let's go to your your CMU person that you sort of mm-hmm. mentioned as a like a throwaway example. Let's take that person and say like, okay, we have a company and we can change its trajectory with a top talent person from Carnegie Mellon who actually understands backwards and forwards the software. Mm-hmm. Now we're not talking about my long term grasp of how to, you know, like run my business on the macro scale. It's like, Katie, you own a business. Do you want top talent? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to lock that ta- top talent down for two years? Also, yes. <laughs> right. You know, will that certainty give you the ability to plan and execute better than your competition? Like those short term rat on a feeder bar. And I right. hate to be insulting with that, but I mean, it really does have to be that way where you're just like, look, don't think any further than like two months out. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be great to have a top tier CMU computer programmer here? Yes or no? And just close them, just close, close, yeah. close, right? Yeah. You are a big picture thinker. And God knows I'm a big fan of that. I just haven't seen a lot of it in the startup community because they're worried about whether or not they're going to survive right. 90 it's days hard. out. Yeah. It's hard. And it's hard to attract the the smaller startups who haven't maybe went through a series a yet and Mm -hmm. so we're you know i can't get too much into it tonight but we are thinking about ways to kind of hedge that gap yeah just have me yell at them like i just did a minute ago (laughs) just have just bring me in and be like okay the big-headed mix is going to come in and just shout at you (laughs) right (laughs) this is going to sit there and be like what is the matter with you Are you bad at math? Idiots. No, they're from (laughs) CMU. (laughs) I don't know how else to say this. Nobody wants your stupid free internship. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, that sounds like it's a real winner. That's how you that's how you win friends and influence people. Maybe we Dale can Carnegie. like <laughs> start a social movement on campus to get all students to reject unpaid internships. It's the carrot or the McTaggart, right? Like those are the <laughs> yeah. two choices. Like I could give you the incentive or Big Head comes in again, right? That's We're locking fantastic. you in a room with Big Head. That's fantastic. And he's just sitting there going like, are you bad with a calculator? What's your problem? <laughs> so you have to talk to employers so mm-hmm. that they are aware of the of the the program. Um, but a lot of times these startups are in stealth mode and, you know, like it's hard to find them until all of a sudden they pop up above the surface, right? Like they're submarines and all of a sudden they come up, 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 come up above the water. Um, how do you find them whenever you're you're working your job? How do I find the companies? How do you find the startups? Yeah. So uh, Pittsburgh is a small town, mm. and that lends itself useful to looking for the startups. Yeah. You you know Innovation Works, Idea Foundry, Alpha Lab, Alpha Lab Gear, right. um, all you know the universities um, and their innovation departments. The startups are there. If I were an employer in Pittsburgh, my biggest complaint would be right now that the capital's not flowing fast enough. And I'm sure you've already heard that story mm-hmm. enough times that you're nauseated by it. But um, you end up with a chicken or the egg problem, right? It's like, well, do we not get the capital because we're not doing good enough? Or are we not doing good enough because we didn't get the capital, right? And again, we're back to top talent. You know, like if you've ever been on LinkedIn for more than eight seconds, you've seen that Steve Jobs quote about like a team of A players will run <laughs> circles around you, right? Like, but A players are hard to get your hands on, yeah. right? And I do think, and and this is why I invited you on because very few people know exactly how to get their hands on an A player, right? It's almost impossible. In sports, at least you have a draft and they have like a ranking system and there's like people who get paid. Mel Kuyper comes on with his pompadour. It's fantastic, right? In startups, we don't have that. We don't have like a, oh, you know, look over here. You know, there's Joe Bag of Startup Donuts and, uh, you know, he runs a 4340. Like, that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded real. <laughs> well, that's because I did the convincing voice, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to. Covered, covered your mouth. <laughs> I, th- I think we broke Katie. <laughs> All of a sudden, she had a great answer. She's like, wait, what was I saying? <laughs> God, how did I get roped into this? Um, I really don't remember what I was saying now. That's funny. I'm sorry. It's probably my fault. You can <laughs> no, blame it, it was, on me. It's probably real. No, it was good. So we were talking about talent. And, yeah, I was and saying they they don't know how to get their hands on real right. talent. And it's and that's exp- that the, uh, the stakes are so much higher for a startup. Isn't that the truth? It's an existential threat. Yes. Yeah. If you don't, people are everything. Uh, someone said, um, being an entrepreneur isn't about necessarily inventing things. It's about being good with people. There's no question. And, yeah. and both on and off the show in this studio, we have had more conversations about investors are looking for the team, not the tech. Right. Catherine Mott was just on yeah. here a little bit ago and she goes, look, the tech never fails. The people fail. Right. They lose a key employee. They have a falling out that they can't fix Mm -hmm. and the team breaks up. When I invest, I invest in the people. I don't really care about the tech. Right. As long as it solves a real problem, you're good. You know, if if you've got a a team that knows how to to roll with the punches, you'll be fine. But again, how do you get that talent? Right. How do you put your hands on it? And the funny thing about Pittsburgh is a lot of the talent is coming here, but they're all leaving. So my lived experience is I moved to Pittsburgh twice. <laughs> and both times I had to recreate a whole new social network for myself. Uh, the first time I left and came back, I thought I was coming back to all the friends I made at grad school and my neighborhood and yada, yada. And these are all young people that left within the couple years that right. I had been I had graduated. And then, so I set out to make a new group of friends and I did, and it was around a sports team. Um, And so most of these folks came from Washington, D.C., and they were in Pittsburgh for uh, their residency, law school, grad school, et cetera. Um, And that was only, you know, 2012 through 2014. Um, We had about 25 folks in that group and we're down to three. 
Wow. So I say it's anecdotal, but it was, but it's a lived experience. And again, these aren't, these are also people of um, multiple ethnicities and backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We're a very white town and this is young, talented people from all different kinds of backgrounds. We ought to be saying collectively, what are we, can we do to keep these people here? So tell me what kinds of companies these students want to join. Like what, what types of companies are, are part of VFA? We have companies in essentially all sectors. Yeah. Uh, so startups in tech, in life sciences, in robotics, in software development, in hardware development. Um, we see about 15 to 25% technical skill sets, mm -hmm. um, like kind of required for fellows. I'm surprised that's not bigger. Yeah. So uh, what I like to say is like, think of it, you have your brainiacs like developing and prototyping, and then they want to take that product to market and mm -hmm. scale it. Yeah. They need marketers and they need, you know, business developers yeah. and they need PR people and storytellers and full stack developers. And so, I mean, don't take this yeah. the wrong way. Honestly, until you told me that, I would have said that like, I was, I was under the impression maybe that you were looking more for software development type people, mm -hmm. right? I'm glad we yeah. clarified that. Yeah, the software devel development engineers, um, there's a huge draw for them and a huge draw for companies knowing that we have a strong portfolio of those kinds of candidates. Well, you said 15 to 20%. Yeah. Let's amp yeah. that up. Let's let's double it. Let's say 30%, right? Mm -hmm. That's still not the majority. That's my point. Like yeah. people with the other skill sets are not only welcome, they're actually getting those placements. And really needed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. I, uh, I think a lot of times when people think startup, they think like, again, you know, like that engineer yeah. that they just don't know how to recruit and and frankly they don't have the skill set to to um uh manage themselves to mm -hmm. to identify who's the good talent versus the bad right, talent right and you know it's all these different things need to keep the ball rolling yeah like marketing in particular and that's just because what i've been closest to throughout my career right you can go down a really deep rabbit hole these days with conversions and clicks and social versus traditional and all these kinds of things. And I mean, yeah. who has time to do that if you don't know? Who has time to learn that? Right. And if you're an engineer, how do you hire a marketer? And if you're a marketer, how do you hire an engineer? Right. Um, again, that's where VFA steps in. Like, we got you guys. We just vetted and yeah. interviewed for six months the best engineers and marketers coming out of college in America today. Um. So I think I might be a candidate. I'm, let's say a freshman, right? Do I start thinking now? Like, do I start getting in touch with you? Or do I really just wait till like senior year and say, you know, hey, I'm about to enter the workforce and I'd like to start talking to VFA. How does that all work? We do have VFA interns. Nice. And uh, definitely start thinking about it before your senior year. Yeah. Because by the time your senior year, if you want to be in VFA, uh, we really love to see you've already worked for or interned at a scrappy organization or a startup, or you started your own side hustle, or you started a campus organization. Those are the founder potential qualities that we see exemplified on a resume. Can like, you handle what's coming? Yeah. yeah. And, and do you want it? And in 2017, we started our own investment fund for fellow founders, and nice. we raised a million dollars. So... Um, Fellows who go through our program and start their own company now ha are eligible for that pot of funding. In addition to an accelerator program, we do a social enterprise award um, that my boy uh, Jordan Robage here in Pittsburgh. Oh, really? Re Revival Chili won. Yeah, and, yeah he's Jordan. a fellow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He's a fellow. He started Revival Chili um, He hasn't under been on VFA. the show. So just to make sure he gets a proper shout, Revival Chili is is a, a really interesting company from a from not just a business perspective, but also a social perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and- yeah, Jordan's Jordan's at all these different events. People yeah. check him out just because he's a good yeah. person. Yeah, he runs a food truck and um, hire it, hires um, previously incarcerated individuals, teaches them culinary schools with the hope that they'll go on and 
and, you know, do their own thing. Right. And he just bought a diner in Wilkinsburg, Nancy's Diner, in uh, Holden Shop down there, fish fries on Fridays. Yeah, Jordan Even deserves before the Lent. Yeah, He does. Yeah. He really deserves the I'm shout. going on and on about Jordan, but. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I, you know, rather do that than not. Um, yeah. So, but my point is, um, again, because we're. Uh, because it's so competitive to get these candidates, when they start hearing, wait a minute, not only is this going to be an on-ramp to my own entrepreneurial career, they're also going to give me money to start my business and right. put me in front of all these VCs and give me all of this exposure and put me through an accelerator program. And then I have a network of 700 people who have also went through VFA, who are also super talented, who can build this business with me. Like, okay. I think I can do this. Yeah. And you've got this unfair advantage, right? In the fact that you know exactly what your people want. So now you can build a whole suite right. of services around the community and know that these all make it sticky, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of businesses try to follow this, but it's sometimes hard to know exactly yeah. what your demographic is that you're hitting. Yeah. Sticky is the sweet spot. Yeah. So we keep our classes small. We really believe that, you know, this program is an on-ramp to entrepreneurship. And the result will be creating more economic opportunity in the 14 cities and maybe more in the future that we're in. So creating jobs in these communities, um, investing back into these communities. So our, a lot of our fellows also have this altruistic idea about um, economic development and economic mobility and, and want to be part of a bigger story. If somebody wants to apply, how do they do it? You can go to VentureForAmerica.org. And what happens if I go to .com? I go to like some sort of like, you know, Viagra site, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guarantee it's Things true. are going to pop up. <laughs> you will never get rid of the malware on your computer if you don't. <laughs> stay away yeah. from the .com. ORG, folks. Yeah, Venture for America, .org. Katie Grimm, the director of Pittsburgh for Venture for America. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Scott. It was fun. All right, that's all the time we've got this week. Thanks to Katie Grimm and everybody over at Venture for America. Make sure you check them out at VentureForAmerica.org. Uh, that's that's just a fantastic program. And, uh, you know, now comes the time where i got to remind you that uh, Wednesday mornings, you know, you can have this thing on your phone every single Wednesday morning ready for your drive into work. Just hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're part of our little community here. We'll be glad to have you. We'll catch you next week. The Pitchworks Podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart, LLC. Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. B-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S.com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. <laughs>